Rebel Wilson speaking, uh, Rebel Wilson's outing sparks Australian media reckoning. And I think what this is, is kind of, uh, it's a hilarious to me because I'm like, now you guys care about journalistic integrity now, really? Uh, of, of all the times and everything that's gone on in the last few years and you guys are just starting to pay attention now because it's affecting somebody that you are actually fans of. This not- is like the dumbest possible tipping point I know. for people to be like, it's time for a media reckoning <laughs> because Rebel Wilson had to make an Instagram post with her new girlfriend like okay (laughs) so it says when australian actress and comedian rebel wilson revealed on instagram she had found love with a woman people celebrated her decision to come out they believed on her own terms but in a gossip column published by the sydney morning herald newspaper the next day its writer disclosed he'd known about the news and given the actress 27 hours to respond before publishing veteran gossip columnist andrew hornery grumbled that wilson had opted to gazump his story by sharing the news herself what is that word must be an australian thing i have no idea (laughs) That's not a term. This is a term. Uh, Veteran, uh, okay, so it says, his own admission of his attempt to report Wilson's deeply personal news sparked immediate outrage globally. For LGBTQ uh, campaigners, I almost said complainers, that would have been bad. Uh, It was a devastating turn, a good news story, a celebrity role model coming out had been marred by a familiar old threat. Coming out is an intensely personal journey and one and still fraught for many. Nikki Bath, chief executive of LGBTIQ+, Health, uh, Health Australia, said that at the Q Life hotline, uh, one in 10 calls received are about the struggles with coming out. When we see someone publicly having to experience uh, the, an experience of being forcibly outed in 2022, I think it throws up a lot of the, in the air about uh, where we are as a society with regards to people's privacy and people's own choices around what happens in their lives. Well, you know, I would love for that same thing. I don't buy that if some journalist uh, who was anti uh, any cause that somebody like this likes, whatever that is, whether it's the environment, something that this person, what's, what's this person's name again? Uh, Nikki Bath. I don't buy that if Nikki Bath cares a lot about the environment and some uh, anti-climate change person comes out and writes an article about her and then gets doxxed, I don't think for a second that she cares if that journalist doxes somebody that she doesn't like. I think that it's team sports and tribalism all, uh, you know, all together once it'll never go away. And I don't believe that there's any actual integrity behind what they're saying here. I think it's just my team suffered uh, a defeat right now and I, and that's a problem. So now we need to change everything. With the Rebel Wilson situation, I thought it was a, just a strange reaction that people were saying like, this is a step back for the LGBT community or like our cause or whatever. Um, when like the journalist in question had nothing against that aspect of the story. He just wanted the exclusive story. And I wasn't necessarily a fan of uh, of the way that he... Sure, he went about it yeah. in a sleazy yeah. way, but it had nothing to do with the yeah. social issue. I, I wasn't a fan of his dismissiveness about like, um, he's like, well, it's, you know, it's 2022 coming out. It's not a big deal anymore. I wasn't a fan of him telling her what's a big deal. Yeah, and that's what not isn't. his place. I do think that like, Mary's totally right. This guy is just like, he wanted this to ex- break this big. Yeah, and he's a journalist. That's story. what he wanted. Can we like address it for what it is? But they're making it about are they social saying issues. that like it's 2022, so you should know better than outing someone who's gay? And, I they, don't. and they talk about okay, so they talk about this. It says in this case, I think Australian media has to do some internal analysis on how it conducts itself. Miss Bath said newsrooms need to need to do every some edu- single other reporter is like we didn't we weren't gonna do this. <laughs> Newsrooms need to do some education around the impact of their reporting. You don't say. Even in 2022 in Australia, it is still dangerous for people to reveal their non-normative sexual or gender preferences. Footballer Josh Cavallo, who came out last year, has reported receiving death threats and vitriol since going public. Uh, yes, um, that, that happened. Like everybody gets death threats nowadays. It seems, it seems like that's, that's the world we live in now. It's the, the problem with being on the internet. Ms. Bath noted this latest incident comes at, a, at some parts of Australian media continue to entertain irresponsible reporting on gay and trans issues. That's the key right there. They only care about irresponsible reporting on those issues. They don't care about irresponsible reporting on anything else. And they set the terms for what is considered irresponsible reporting. Right? Exactly. So it says the recent general... Because in some ways... Sorry, I'm just, it's just occurring no. to me. Like if a... Uh, name a famous actress. If Vanessa Hudgens was dating other hunky male actor whatever and we Zac didn't Efron. know Zac Efron or um, I, well, Bill Hader and um, Rachel or um, 
Who's the I girl from Pitch Perfect? Oh, Anna Kendrick? Anna Kendrick. Apparently they're dating. That's okay. what I've heard. And someone was like, Gossip Mag. Anna Kendrick and, and What's-His-Face are dating. Like, I get that Rebel Wilson is gay, but could we argue, devil's advocate here, that by outing Rebel Wilson as if it, they were just outing any other heterosexual couple... They're actually doing something totally normal. They've actually normalized gay relationships in the yeah, media. You're just, just, just like as a thought experiment here. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I do see like, what you're We're actually is asking for it more can happen privacy to you. for gay actresses. Then give people. more privacy to all and celebrities. And I guess it's because she's not out, but also like, haven't we heard that we're uh, in post out culture? Like, you don't need to come out because it's so normal that, like, it could be any you know what i mean we saying? are post out yep. yeah right so in that way like they're asking for something they're asking to be treated differently they're not asking right. for equitable treatment it says the recent general election saw a disproportionate focus on often inaccurate claims about trans people in sport in a debate drummed up by the previous conservative government this is a harmful impact on young trans people advocates said they never tell you what is exactly harmful they just tell you it's harmful uh, in the case of Rebel Wilson's outing, the newspaper has now issued three statements regarding the pu- in responding to the public anger. Public anger. In his mea culpa on Monday, Hornery said that as a gay man, he was well aware of how deep. What? He's he's gay. I See, didn't. I didn't know that. That's what I'm saying. Like he's just outing. Like he's like doxing us. Not doxing, but he's like you know the way gossip columnists yeah. do. Like being like. This is the scoop. There this was not a single thought put into I, I'm gonna like regress the culture like yeah. at all. Yeah, and people are just reading into it too far and also not addressing the actual issue. Like actually, what you're telling us is we have not progressed to the point where like this is considered outing as opposed to just revealing a celebrity couple that yeah. was keeping uh-huh. their relationship. So it says, uh, it says, as a gay man, he was well aware of how deeply discrimination hurts. The last thing I would ever want to do is inflict that pain on someone else. He was literally just doing his job and not thinking of it the way that they were. But I guess she never... And yes, his job is morally reprehensible. Yes. Yeah, but that's a different story. <laughs> but but that's this a different in, subject. So it says, the, this is in turn, uh, where did I say? This is in turn <laughs> raised questions as to why he approached Wilson in the way he did, <laughs> saying that he had several sources and enough detail to publish. Critics say that reflected a journalist ego and abuse of power encouraged in certain newsroom cultures all newsroom cultures hey uh, whoa hey, 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 hey. let me bring chris carr into this okay uh okay i want to go down to this part here about media ethics so it says uh to media ethics experts however it appeared that the black and white of the case <sighs> uh this is a black and white case of unethical journalism practice uh this is a story that should not have seen the light of day said dr sasha uh, Mala Torres. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name. That's that's a hard one. Uh, a law and ethics academic at the University of Technology, Sydney, who was a senior journalist at the Herald for nearly two decades. He characterized Mr. Shields' editorial deference as disingenuous. Hornery's email to, to Wilson showed clear intention to publish, he said. Tim Dwyer, a media ethics professor at the University of Sydney, also described Shields' defense as weak for such a Wild West privacy intrusion. He might call it a process, but in fact, it's an ethical decision that is not up for other people to make. In this case, they hold uh, they hold highly responsible positions. The experts pointed out that the editorial misjudgments in a culture which prioritizes scoops over ethical standards can flourish in an industry which remains largely self-regulated. These are all very true. Uh, Isn't that a good thing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, they also noted that there are 14 sets of standards that apply to journalists, but uh, his own research shows his own research shows uh, his own research shows few journalists know these codes comprehensively. When pressed, most said they relied on their own morals in guiding their work. Hey, Brett. Source. Exactly. Uh, wait, isn't that a good thing that it's self-regulating? Mm. At least the expectation that it be self-regulating. Well, they want to punish you. They want to punish you if, yeah. if you do something they don't like. Uh, in this what case, are you ashamed of? Yeah. Like, what are you like? What's the big deal? Okay, so here's it says in this case, experts said that main ethical principle clearly breached was that of privacy. That individuals are entitled to privacy unless newsrooms de- deem disclosure would serve the public interest. Who decides what? is the public interest one could argue mr hornery could make the argument that look young uh gay women or men need positive examples of uh successful people who are proud to come out and uh and revealing this information would help them in being more prideful uh, of who they are and be willing to come out he could make that argument is it a good one no but that's his moral judgment when it's that ambiguous who's to say what that is well and i think part of it is they're having this standard that we actually warp when we talk about like gossip columns right yeah. like 
does anyone actually need to know anything about celebrities? Like, is it in well, public also, interest? Like, if I it's would, a rumor, you don't need to he's cite saying, your sources on it. He's saying it's not a rumor that he knew for sure. So, like, he is... It's a little bit different than, like, if you were reporting on a rumor. But, like, what I would say is, like... The, like, j- just to contrast, like, the Ezra Miller stuff that's being reported is interesting. It's important. It's in the public interest. He was like. Because if you have a 12 year old, you need to know. You need to know. Whether, if Ezra Miller is literally creeping up the street, you need to know whether he's th- whether they're he there. He targets, it seems like, specifically teens that are interested in activism and who may or may not think that they are transgender, yeah. right? So, with this case, like, it does not matter to me in the world if Taylor Swift is married or Rebel Wilson is dating a girl or. Tom Cruise is adopting a baby from Siberia. You know what I mean? Like, he none is? of that's... No, he's not. Wow. I made the last one up. Okay. That's a rumor. Uh, <laughs> but, like, none of that actually matters in public interest. Like, yeah. that is not the same thing. And you would have to reevaluate all gossip columns to meet the standards. Like, I, I think this is a weird thing to apply when they clearly never apply it to this type of journalism anyways. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's also interesting because it's kind of a uh, an outcome of like a culture that's become all gossip and no actual like there's no line anymore between what is actual journalism and, and what is gossip journalism. Like the joke I would always make is like if you took any of the headlines from the last four years and just slap like a, a Globe or a National Enquirer logo on it, it wouldn't look any different than something you'd read. Well, in and there were magazines. times that like I think it was the National Enquirer was like getting stuff right before other people, but people didn't want to publish it because they were like, Enquirer. this is super salacious. Mm -hmm. what are you talking about like i think it was like i don't remember some politician who had an affair and it became like a big deal inquire published it first like eric swalwell maybe maybe. i can't remember who it was so this is that doctor again says personally i've worked with editors and journalists who are extremely sensitive and aware and others who had as much empathy as a a cricket bat he said but newsrooms need to (laughs) actually uh, newsrooms need to actually spend more time thinking about discussing cultivating ethical practice the problem is is that if you if they're to apply this to anything else they're going to have their own bias and it's never going to be ha- it's never going to be fairly applied both across entertainers the and the people who report on entertainers are bad people <laughs> that makes us bad people <laughs> they're like more like journalists i mean are like yeah. morally not like they're not our our moral examples in society i don't think we should look to journalists as like our our moral leaders or like ethical role models. Unless of they're Hannah Claire, of course. Yes. Yeah, I'm not saying. <laughs> well, obviously, <laughs> I wouldn't represent all journalists. I'm just saying. I think like, like. Well, but I don't think that they're saying they have to be role models. I think that we just the same way we'd hold a medical expert to a certain level of ethical standard. Like we want everyone in our world to operate on from an ethical perspective. Yeah. But when it's a place, medical professional, that's about people's lives. And uh, but like lots of defamation cases get re- get filed against the New York Times because the things that they print have an impact on people's lives. Yeah. Okay, like all I'm saying, uh, I is mean, life that or death. We want people to live by ethical standards, but we as a society have no understanding of what our general shared ethical practices are anymore. And it's going to take like a whole, in my opinion, like a cultural renaissance to for us to mediate like what our values are as a society right now because they have been so distorted that we don't even know if we're talking about the same thing that's something we come back to pretty regularly is that like we're just culture yeah and i don't want to keep saying that and i'm like you know (laughs) sounding the death knell of of society and i'm some kind of like the uh, end of days is coming bible thumper but like (laughs) it's true and it keeps coming up in pop culture. Yep. So it says right here, it says, how do we depict LGBTQIA? How do we depict various groups in our society in a way that doesn't reinforce inequities and doesn't make people more vulnerable and cause harm? What is, what is harm? What is vulnerable? What are those inequities exactly? Otherwise, it's just platitudes. Mm-hmm. It's just, I'm, I'm over it. It's not good enough for journalists to say they're simply guided by their personal moral compass. So what do they think? Do well, they want... Another thing is like, why does everyone have a harm-based yeah. paradigm for like what's ethical or not? And, and, w- and what is like, in, in like by moral compass, like, so what are they saying? They, do they want government interaction? Like they want them to punish these people Probably. for for having the wrong, uh, the a moral compass that isn't up to whatever that random person's standard is? It's like not, in the it's name of, of journalism ethics, we're going to heavily censor journalists. Basically, that's what they're that's saying. That's not yeah. the answer. Yep. 
Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.